Hello all, welcome to the Security Tube GNU Debugger Expert Course and Certification. This is video 6 and in this video we will look at an, a very interesting concept which is modifying data in memory as well as changing CPU registers at runtime. So just like in previous videos, if you want the slides as well as the code snippets for this video, you have two options. The first is to support us uh, by probably registering for the SGDE at $1.50. You will get all the course videos as high definition downloads. Of course, the PDF slides and code snippets included. And then a mock exam, a certification exam. And if you pass, we would give you a e-certificate for the course. Alternately, there is no problem if you probably cannot afford the $1.50. You could help us spread the word, allow more people to uh, probably go ahead and leverage this free education from Security Tube by tweeting the video. So if you go on the web page, all you have to do is there is a link which says PDF and code snippet downloads. Click on that in the description. It will take you to a page which looks like this. Click on tweet the video. Hit the tweet button here. Remember to do it here rather than uh, on the video page and then simply tweet this. Uh, you also need to follow Security Tube and to leave behind your Twitter ID as well as your email address to where you want us to send the PDF slides. If you'd like to register, click and all you have to do is fill up your name and email, hit buy now and we'll take you to PayPal uh, where once you pay, you'll hear back from our team within 24 to 48 hours. Okay, let's get back to the video. Now, in previous videos, we've looked at how to uh, probably use the examine command to look at memory locations, data, and all of that, as well as using info registers to look at what values are there in the CPU registers. Now, in any security exercise, the ability to monitor is the first part uh, and the ability to actively do something to change the outcome is probably the second part, which of course gives more power to you. And this is what we are going to explore in this video. So let's go back here. Let's go to our SGDE folder. Let's go to video six. Do the same here. And let me open up the file. Just one small change. Okay, very simple program. And let me explain to you what happens. Uh, various code snippets from previous programs as well. We call echo input, which echoes whatever is given as argv1 out to the output. And then we call add numbers on argv2 and argv3. And all it does is prints the sum of both those numbers. Right, so the program takes in three inputs. Here is add numbers, very simple echo input. And then finally, we also have a function called function should not execute. And all it says is I should not execute simply because it's not called from anywhere else uh, in this program. Okay, so let's go ahead, compile this program. Done. Let's run the program once. Three inputs, let's say AAA, 10 and 20. And as expected, it basically gives out the first RV1 back to us, prints it back to screen, and adds the second, the second and the third arguments passed to it and prints their sum. Right? Awesome. Now let's load this up in GDB. 
Awesome. Now let's create a breakpoint at main. And now let's run the program with exactly the same arguments. You could run it with anything else as well. Awesome, we've hit our breakpoint. Now, typically, if you remember from previously, uh, when you want to go ahead and examine something, there are multiple ways to do it. So let's say I want to examine arc v1. There you go. Arc v2, all of this using the print command and arc v3. Alternately, you can even use the examine command and examine arg v1, v2, and v3 as strings. Right? The other option also is to look at all of this as simple character arrays. So let's say arg v1, uh, let's say 5c, right? And we can see the four a's which we inputted followed by a trailing null which basically is the string termination character right zero nothing else just zero uh, now what if we want to go ahead and change the value of arg v1 at runtime right and we actually want to modify it right here in memory now gdb provides you a very interesting option to do that so first let me type out the whole thing and i'll show you how it's done so this is probably the starting address of arg v1 as you can imagine. Uh, let me copy that. And now I'm going to use the command set. Open up my little curly brackets, char. And after that, what I'm going to do is paste the memory address equals. And now we can mention what this is, right B. What is this really doing? Well, this basically is telling the set command that take up this memory location and interpret what is there as a single character to be changed or to be set, which would mean just a single byte and set it to this value, right B, capital B. Let me hit the command. Let me examine our view one once again. And if you notice the first character B has been changed right awesome so you could also alternately mention the ascii value itself you could do that by probably referring the ascii table right you could take specific values or if you remember already so as i can see 65 is capital a 66 is capital b 67 would be interesting and there you go. If you see, this is nothing but C, right? So the key thing here to remember is that whatever you write here as the data type to interpret is what set is going to interpret this memory location as, or the beginning of this memory location, and set this value within there. So as an example, let's say if you had said this is not a character, rather an integer right if you go back here you would actually notice that something has been changed here now the interesting thing is that you could play around with this as much as you like and it would do interesting stuff so if you notice basically all of them are zero right now. Set it to one, right? And if you notice, this is being set to one right now. Now, the key thing here is that whatever you mention here is what the interpretation is. So keep that in mind. Now, let me do the following. Let me change all the A's to basically B's. Right, so let me go back here and say, hey, let this be a B. Right, now I've taken as one character, which means I need to go ahead and mention the next value to be plus one, right? It's a byte, a single byte. Right, let this also be a B. Two. And then finally, three. Right? Let's just view all the locations again. 
and if you notice we have b set next value is b as well third one is b as well and the fourth one is b as well awesome uh, let me go ahead run the program or allow it to continue till the end and awesome if you notice it basically printed out all these which is the modified argv1 which we have done that in memory now let me run the program once again now it's not just about stuff in memory you can modify variables and all of that by just calling them from name as well so let me quickly list what is there and uh, why don't we actually go ahead and modify the variable sum before the printing is going to happen right so let me go ahead set up a breakpoint for line number I think this is 52 so here you go continue it's the breakpoint let's look at the value of sum right now it's 30 as expected let's go ahead and set the value of sum to 2000 yeah. now let's continue printing and if you notice it says sum of 10 plus 20 is 2000 <laughs> it's a bad calculator okay so it's it's not just uh, you know gdb gives us the power not only to change things in memory variables and all of that it also allows us to change cpu registers at runtime right how does that happen now before we do that what we want to look at is the program code a little bit more in detail and we have a function here which says function should not execute right so multiple ways you can figure out the actual address of this function you know you could use nm uh, you know a bunch of other things one of the ways could be first to just hit a quick info functions right you notice that the function is available here then just do a quick print on the function itself and it gives you the address of the function right awesome now let me actually do a quick info registers at this point there are no registers simply because the program is not running so I'm copying the location of function should not execute and let me run this program once again with some inputs right it's broken at main let's do a quick info registers right now the point which I'd like to make is that you can modify you know these CPU registers uh, so as an example if I want to modify EAX we just do a set you have to put a dollar sign before all registers EAX equals let's say 10 and now if you do an info registers you would notice that EAX has been set to 10 or 0xA now a word of caution here remember that these CPU registers are used by the program code right which means if you don't understand what you've changed you may crash the program or there might be unexpected behavior so keep that in mind uh, let me finish the whole run of this program right nothing happened right now but you know things have could have uh, caused an issue so we're probably more lucky than rather this being the norm now let me run the program again and let me do a quick info registers now one of the interesting registers if you probably you know looked at the assembly language videos which I had pointed you out in a previous uh, class was that EIP basically holds the location of the instruction to be executed next right now what we will do in this case is change the value of EIP to point to function should not execute and that is as easy as just reassigning EIP to the address which we have copied for function should not execute there you go let me clear the screen hit continue and if you notice it just says I should not execute but unfortunately after that there's a segmentation fault now why does the segmentation fault happen is simply because once 
we call function should not execute and printf happens, uh, the code returns and when it returns, it pops out the return address from the stack. Now, unfortunately, because we just arbitrarily change the value of EIP, there is no logical flow to this location in the program. And hence, whatever is there on the stack may pretty much be garbage, right? And that's the reason why eventually the program crashes. Now, to solve this, well, one of the easiest ways, for example, just in code, uh, is to just create an exit zero, right? Or any exit call for that matter. There you go. And fit this program. Call it back again. Let's break in main. Let's do a quick info functions. So actually copy the function name. And then do a print on it to quickly get the address. And let's do an info registers. It's not started yet, so let's start the program. Oops, sorry, it's run, not continue. Write broken at main and let's set EIP equals function should not execute. Let's continue now. And if you notice, it says program exited normally. And the simple reason this happened is because calling exit ensures that, you know, the final cleanup and all of that happens and the function or the program rather, uh, you know, exits peacefully, right? Awesome. So let's recap what we learned in this video. We learned a couple of important things. The first is that we can modify uh, data in memory. We can change the variables at runtime. We can change the CPU registers, including EIP. And this gives us a lot of power as someone debugging, disassembling, or trying to reverse engineer a program, right? The ability to change stuff around uh, from a reverse engineering perspective, or even from a software tracking perspective, if you want to test the security, uh, you know, of the software in question uh, is, is, is probably the single most important thing uh, which allows you to do a lot of interesting stuff, right? Anyway, let's go back to the slides. So that's all I had in mind for this video. Uh, please do tweet the video or register for the SGDE by paying $1.50 and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.